Today, Bitcoin slumps to start the week. SBF denies insolvency rumors after users complain of slow withdrawals and Binance dumps half a billion in FTT tokens. And with less than 24 hours until election day, we explore the rising influence of crypto in politics. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Digital currencies falling sharply to kick off the week. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin managed to stay above $20,000. Ether maintained $1,500, while Solana slid to $31. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First, FTX responded to customer complaints about slow withdrawals yesterday, posting support updates on Twitter. Now, in a series of tweets, the crypto exchange wrote that it's churning through Bitcoin withdrawals and making changes to help speed everything up. FTX also addressed stablecoin withdrawals, noting that redemptions might be slow until banks open for the week. This comes as the crypto exchange faces major liquidations of its token FTT following a dispute with rival exchange Binance. In a tweet yesterday, Binance CEO CZ said the company will liquidate all of its holdings of FTT as a result of recent revelations that have come to light. In a follow-up tweet, CZ wrote that the move is just post-exit risk management. Some Reddit users warned last night that the situation could be similar to when bankrupt crypto lender Celsius halted withdrawals and misled users ahead of its collapse. Next, U.S. authorities confiscated more than a billion dollars worth of crypto, the Justice Department's second biggest financial seizure ever. The U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York said more than 50,000 Bitcoin tied to the darknet marketplace Silk Road was seized last November. Now, at the time, the Bitcoin was worth more than $3 billion. Now, it's worth more than $1 billion. Authorities say the coins were found in a Georgia address connected with James Zhang, who they say pleaded guilty to committing wire fraud 10 years ago. Last up, UK Bank Santander will block customers in the region from sending real-time payments to crypto exchanges. Reuters reported on Friday, citing an emailed statement that next year the bank will introduce the restriction with the goal of protecting customers from scams. Santander is joining other banks in the UK, limiting transfers to exchanges, and customers won't be able to transfer more than £1,000 per transaction or a total £3,000 in a 30-day period. Customers will, however, still be able to receive payouts from crypto exchanges. According to this notice on its website, Santander has seen a, quote, large increase in UK customers becoming victims of crypto fraud in recent months and noted that investing in digital assets can be high risk. All right, on to our main story. With voters heading to the polls across the US tomorrow, candidates are making one final push to get out the vote. Now, one group some politicians might not be thinking about crypto voters. But advocacy groups are trying to change that. Millions of dollars from the crypto industry has flooded into Washington this year, all in the hopes of shaping policy on Capitol Hill and supporting crypto-friendly politicians on the campaign trail. Crypto World's Jordan Smith took a look at the rise of crypto lobbying and fundraising ahead of the midterms. If you were to ask crypto insiders what issues are holding back the industry right now, one major theme you'd hear outside of the bear market is a lack of regulatory clarity. So I think the best way to describe crypto regulation in the U.S. right now is fragmented. Everybody in Washington wants regulatory clarity right now. They want the rules of the road so they can go innovate and stop worrying about what's happening in Washington, that someone around the corner is going to shut down their technology. Most crypto businesses and investors say they simply want to play by the rules, but they need to know what those rules are. And it turns out these same stakeholders are pouring millions of dollars into lobbying efforts to help shape the U.S.'s regulatory regime. And it's this, been this debate between industry leaders and congressional uh, you know, lawmakers about what role Congress is supposed to play in regulating crypto. The industry has been trying to educate uh, lawmakers on exactly what cryptocurrency is, uh, how it impacts voters, right, in particular. And you know, it really had been launching a, a really large-scale lobbying campaign on Capitol Hill to influence Congress. Crypto's political influence has risen in recent years, but really took off in 2021. That's when lawmakers drafted the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill, which included a new tax reporting requirement for crypto brokers, but left the definition of brokers vague. That plan sent the crypto industry scrambling to respond. You saw a wake-up call coming with that infrastructure bill that passed last year. 
There's an old saying in Washington, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And that was the exact moment that folks in the political campaign side, not the policy side, but the campaign side, woke up and said, yo, we got to be involved here because they're discussing our issues and we're not sitting here trying to help people, uh, help elect folks who are good on our issues. Between July and September of last year, crypto lobbying efforts reached more than $2.2 million, all in the hopes of convincing lawmakers to make the rules much clearer. Now the lobbying effort within the crypto industry has only grown in 2022, just as lawmakers become more vocal with their stance on the technology in the run-up to the midterm elections. There seems to be two different extremes on Capitol Hill um, from, from lawmakers as to where they stand on regulation. There is a consistent theme, though, that most lawmakers on both sides do believe there has to be some form of regulation on crypto. There are people like Elizabeth Warren who have suggested that uh, crypto can be used to uh, evade sanctions uh, by by the Russians and, and, and other countries who are trying to evade sanctions. And then there's other people in Congress, some of them Democrats, some of them Republicans, who say, who, who aren't really with Elizabeth Warren on that, who do want to see some form of regulation. Crypto-focused advocacy groups have spent $3.9 million in the first half of this year. FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried has also spent millions of dollars on lobbying and fundraising for crypto-friendly candidates. There's been millions of dollars donated uh, from crypto executives um, to their affiliated PACs, and those affiliated PACs have then spent millions of dollars, um, largely during the primaries and a little bit during the general election. But the one um, big player that stands out among all of them is Sam Bankman-Fried. And, and he's put, pumped over $30 million into these midterms. It, he, it is the first time, I believe, he is one of the top donors uh, toward federal races across the country. At the same time, SBF's colleague Ryan Salem has financed GMI PAC, which hopes to spend $20 million on crypto-friendly candidates. So GMI PAC is focused on electing the next generation of Congress that understands that cryptocurrency, blockchain, and Web3 technologies are an important part of the future and that it's critically important that we build the next generation of the internet, internet right here in America and that we keep those jobs right here in America. So we have looked at races all across the country. It's a bipartisan organization to try and bring members of Congress together and candidates together on this one issue when the rest of the country is so divided on so many other things. Voters are also paying more attention to crypto than ever. A survey from GMI found that 17% of voters in battleground states have invested in crypto. A similar poll conducted by the Crypto Council for Innovation found 52% of likely voters want clearer regulations for the industry. A rising number of voters want lawmakers to act, and if they don't, those voters and the industry could move to replace them with someone who will. Improve federal legislation or not, this industry will grow. People's ability to engage through the internet and via commerce and in their personal wealth and wealth creation, it will grow no matter what. And so whether or not it's a, it's, it's a November 2022 event, certainly by November 2024 it will be, and thereafter. And I think people had, had in, in D.C. had better get their minds around it or democracy will do what democracy does in a good way. In 2020, Joe Biden defeated President Trump in Pennsylvania, state by state, by only 80,000 votes. In November, there's a Senate race in Pennsylvania between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz. There are gonna be more than 850,000 crypto voters and crypto owners who are gonna to go to the poll in November. Those voters can swing a tight election. 80,000 margin, 850,000 crypto voters. If you are able to connect with those crypto voters, you can swing some of these tight races. Okay, one last thing. Some people in Lebanon are mining Bitcoin or storing wealth using crypto to make ends meet. All this while the country is plunged into financial chaos as hyperinflation grips the region. The dollar pegged stablecoin Tether, which users trade for cash, is also popular in the bankrupt country. In fact, some hotel and tourism agencies now accept Tether. Lebanon has strict laws against accepting crypto payments, but that hasn't stopped businesses from skirting the rules. You can check out the full story over at CNBC.com. That's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow, so we'll see you then.